apply your truth to our own daily life. Amen. I'm glad to be here today. I preached here 25 years in a row, each Sunday on Labor Day weekend. Last year, my streak was broken. I wasn't able physically to make it. Today I'm going to talk to you about a, a theme that is uh, familiar to all of us, and that is pain. In recent years, I have developed a uh, persistent pain, uh, pain in my lower back. It hurts me at various times to varying degrees. It hurts me so when I sit in the car, when I sit to eat, or when I'm in the church pew. I, become, I have become increasingly dependent. That's one of the experiences of age. Two years ago, I could walk freely just as you. So appreciate this ability that you have. Now I cannot walk alone. I have to have somebody with me around in a wheelchair. So wherever I go, somebody has to be with me to wheel me around. And today that is being done by my son Dan, who's in Pennsylvania, this week, visiting me this weekend. To complicate matters, I had a stroke last year. A friend of mine came to the door to visit me. And I, there was no response, so he came in and he found me on the floor, face downward. So I, at least the rescue team took me to the local hospital. And I was in the hospital for four weeks. They tell me I was completely out of it for two days. Didn't say a word, didn't eat a bite. The third day I woke up to the surprise of all. It was like a resurrection. <laughs> the doctors were astounded. They thought I was too gone for good. I had another stroke after that. As a result, I lost my sense of taste. So I don't enjoy food anymore. And uh, I eat to get strength. I apply one of my favorite Bible verses, and I, uh, it's a good verse for you to remember, very practical, and that is, give thanks in all circumstances. Let's say that together. Give thanks, thanks in all circumstances. I tell myself it could have been worse. I could have lost my sight or my speech. Family, uh, when I had this uh, first stroke, thought that I was dying. And they were at the point of making funeral arrangements for me. <laughs> Lazarus <laughs> after the name of a man whom Jesus raised from the dead. So I'm in the quandary now. When my faith in my pain is severe, I say, oh God, take me home. I have lived 110 years. That's more than my share. I'm family and friends and Pray for me and that my health may improve. I pray for one thing, that I may, may go with the Lord. They pray with the other. They pray that I will stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have different prayer requests. <laughs> once in a while, too. you're not sure just what you should pray for. If God keeps me alive, what may be his purpose? Some person among us here, some man or woman, may at the present time not be trusting in Jesus. You, you may believe in him in theory, but you don't believe in him from the heart. And God wants you to put your 
trust in Jesus, your Savior. He wants you to say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died for my sins. Because what Jesus did for me, I know I'm forgiven by you. And I am wholly acceptable to the Holy God. Another possibility is that God may not be finished with us yet. I believe that God has created each one of us for a purpose. And he may still have work for us to do. Earlier this year, I baptized a little baby. And last month, I had the wedding ceremony for my grandson, James. So I believe that God kept me alive for these purposes and for other reasons of which I'm not aware. Where life on work on earth is done, and when you and I have served the purpose for which we were born, I believe you'll take us to heaven. And in heaven, there will be no more sickness or sorrow. There will be no more tears. There will be no more pain. And we'll experience incredible joy with God in heaven. As I look back, I realize that my pain was not all bad. If I had just a little pain, I might have thought, well, I got along quite well on my own. I had little need of God. But my pain has been more severe. And so I have grown closer to God. I pray more now. I read the Bible more. And I can better understand the pains and problems of other people. So, as a result of this experience, I am stronger and I serve a useful purpose. I agree with the psalmist. It is good that I was afflicted. It is good that I was afflicted. Now, I've told you my story. I, I hope it has been helpful to you and you learned something. To you, God says, and to fact for all of us, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I'll say that again. Fear not. God is always telling us, fear not. Do not be afraid. For he says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. So, may you remember these thoughts. God is with us. We're here right now. We're with each other. And now let us believe that God, the invisible one, the eternal spirit, that this eternal spirit is with us right now. God is with us right now. And that thought sink into our heart. Another fact is God loves us no matter what happens. This God who is among us right now loves us with all his being no matter what happens. And God desires our best for us. And he is making all things work together for our good. I'll repeat that. God is with us. Not only here, we leave the rest of the day for the rest of my life, every moment of my life, and your life, God is with us. God loves us. Believe it or not, God loves me and He loves you, no matter what happens. And He is making all things work together for our good. I'll repeat. God is with us, always, God loves us, and God makes things work together for our good. 
I will close with a prayer. Oh God, help us to believe that you are with us now and always. Help us to believe that you love us, each one of us, with all your being. Help us to believe that you're working all things 